Hi, welcome to Abide TV. Now, today I want to talk about the issue of emotions. Now, just to be clear up front, I would come theologically from what would be considered a conservative evangelical theological perspective. Now, with that, I will freely admit that within my own theological camp, there is kind of a fear of emotions, which fear is an emotion, isn't it? Anyway, we, we see emotions at work in Christianity, and our knee-jerk reaction tends to be to run to the hills and run away from emotions. And I think the reason I think we do that is because we see abuses in what we call emotionalism, in that people who allow emotions to dominate and to set the tone or to dictate their walk with Christ. And I think we rightly want to avoid that extreme of emotionalism, but we do so at the expense of emotions altogether. That we can be so busy shaking our fist and preaching against emotionalism that we can often come across as preaching against emotions in general. But all you have to do is go through the Psalms and we see emotions all over the place. Because the reality is we are emotional people. We're emotional creatures. And maybe it's a variety of factors. Maybe part of it is some of the, the great theological minds are more intellectual and they, they're not as prone to emotions as the average person. I don't know. But whatever it is, we, we tend to put forth this idea that emotions are to be feared and ignored at all costs. And I don't see that in Scripture. I see emotions playing a part. Think about it this way, for example. Let's say that you're married, whether you're an intellectual or if you're prone to emotions. If you're married, does your love for your spouse bring about an emotional response in you? I mean, on your wedding day, oh guys, on your wedding day, when you saw your wife coming down the aisle in her wedding gown, and on that day, was there any sense of excitement in you at all? My guess is there was. Regardless of how intellectual you might be, on that day, there was an emotional response in us. In fact, everyone I've ever talked to has something that they get excited about, something that evokes an emotional response in them. And if we do that, if we get worked up about sports or about reading or about history, whatever it is, whatever we get kind of excited about or worked up about, how much more so should we get excited about the things of God? and allow emotions to play a part. Now, I'm not suggesting that we allow emotions to dominate us or to dictate our Christian lives or that everything we do is based on emotions. I think that is wrong. But I think it's also wrong to say that emotion should have no part in our walk with Christ. I think it's a perfectly natural part of who we are to bring our emotions to the table as we worship God, as we seek Him, as we follow Him. So my encouragement to us, first of all, is to be careful that as we maybe kind of speak against emotionalism, that we don't at the same time speak against emotions, because that's part of who we are. But also as we come before the Lord in worship and praise or in prayer to realize that if there's anything in the, this world that creates within us an emotional response, whether we call it excitement or whatever it is, if there's anything that does that in us, if Christ is truly the most important thing in our lives, then shouldn't he deserve an even more of an emotional response than anything else that we're passionate about? Bring that passion, bring that excitement, allow those emotions to be part of your pursuit of Christ. But don't let those emotions dominate you or to control you, but bring those to the table as part of who you are and your worship and praise to God. So thank you so much for joining us here today for our next episode of Abide TV. And Lord willing, we'll meet you back here next time. Until then, abide in Christ.